we are ready to start our historic meeting. I would like to welcome everyone on Zoom, all participants, and also hi to everyone on Facebook Live, to every follower. Um, my name is Olivier Anthony Turia. I am here in Bern, capital of Switzerland, to welcome you for this uh, unique meeting. Uh, this meeting will be also recorded because we want to keep it as um, for archives later and for a later post on YouTube. Of course. I am uh, very grateful to Reinhold Friedrich, Orkan Hardenberger, and Winton Marsalis to have accepted to participate to this Zoom conference in a very friendly and social uh, spirit. Uh, they are, have accepted to do it also uh, to support my uh, crowdfunding um, campaign, Music Beyond the Walls, which uh, wants to support um, freelance musicians in need during uh, this very hard uh, period of uh, crisis. So I'm very uh, thankful and grateful that you have accepted to relate this event to this uh, fundraising. Um, on the social medias, on Zoom and on the chat and on the, um, the comments on Facebook, you will see the different links. And if you want to donate, please feel free. And I already thank you um, a lot of people who have um, donate and a lot of participants have done that and thank you very much for your support and I hope we can go forward to have more to help more. Now I would like to uh, introduce the, the three uh, let's say legend of the trumpet. Um, in my life I never thought I would have the, the chance and the privilege to see them uh, united like today or tonight. And I call them the big three uh, just because I'm a big tennis fan and we call Nadal, Federer and Djokovic the big three. So for me, it, they were kind of my big three in the trumpet. Um, it's, um, I don't know who is RF, but RF tonight, it's not Roger Federer, for, but for sure this is Reinhold Friedrich. <laughs> <laughs> right. I let um, Hokan and Winton choose uh, which uh, tennis player they want to be. Uh, <laughs> now, uh, I would like to, to start this meeting with the possibility to each one to ask a question to the other uh, great trumpet player. You all have a great, amazing, absolutely uh, fantastic career. I know this is not finished and you have still energy and a lot of project for the future, but you were probably a um, checking what the other ones were doing and i'm very curious to see now which kind of question you can uh, ask to each other so please uh, if you want to start right now you are welcome for to start this meeting please so okay hello entire trumpet fanatic world um, I'm very happy to be here and I'm also extremely happy to uh, be in the group of the big three. I'm th I think I'm the only big three because of my body weight. <laughs> uh, that body weight, I will, I will be the best of all of three. Uh, but uh, I, I, you will not believe how early I was hearing about you. I was a trumpet player in the World Youth Symphony Orchestra in Interlaken. With 17 years and then there was the there was the talk about there's a young trumpet player he's already playing the brandenburg and i thought what <laughs> what he's already playing my piece and <laughs> i i was shocked in a way but uh, so i uh, that helped me to go on with the practicing and later we met us once in in uh, chicago when i was buying a, a trumpet by david Monet. And then you make, gave a little recital with a, with a quintet. And uh, I asked the question, but my answer was the wrong one. You, you asked what is really difficult with trumpet playing. I, and then, then the question went around. And I said, yeah, what is really difficult? And you have to practice is intervals. And you said, oh, fuck up. No, that is not difficult. <laughs> <laughs> so, OK. Um, what I want first to say, I really want to express my deep, uh, my deep regret for your father's death, which is just a short time, not two months away. And, uh, and it has to do with this crisis, as we know. And I'm 
very, very, uh, uh, I want to express my condolation for the death of your father, Alice. You were born in an extremely musical family with, from, I think, before you have been on the earth, the music was already filled up in your head. <laughs> uh, <laughs> mine also, but totally different. Mine started with Bach and it ended with Johann Sebastian Bach. So my, my, I was on a small <laughs> track, you have been on the big track. Uh, this morning I would have had my premiere in the Elb Philharmonie in Hamburg with the Hamburg States Opera Orchestra and I would have played the for me the biggest trumpet composed trumpet concerto in the in the history uh, that would have been the uh, band Alois Zimmermann nobody knows the trouble I, I see right. the trouble I see and I, in the moment I see a lot of trouble right. I see not right. only in Minnesota I see it in a lot of places and it's hard to see that and uh, my question to you is when can I buy the flight ticket and with me a lot of hundreds of followers and we fly from Frankfurt to New York to hear you with this concert in the, <laughs> to, in, in the, in the, in the big, uh, big hall uh, in, in Carnegie. That would be my question. Do you think it would be possible? First, I, I, I want to I wanna say thank you very much for, for your kind and thoughtful words. I want to say how, how pr proud and happy I am to be with you and to be with Hook on. And that, uh, you know, it's been many years, too, of me admiring your playing and knowing you and having respect. And uh, it's deeper than a pleasure to be on. It makes me feel young. It's, it's interesting. You, you reference, you know, being 17 or 18. I know we're supposed to be the kind of older guys at this point, but when I see y'all here, and this one thing, I feel like a kid. You know, oh. because, because, you know, you sacrificed so much for our instrument across these many decades. Hokan, he knows. I, we, we were laughing before we got on about listening to him play the Charlie A2s. <laughs> you know, I was saying he made me pick my horn up and look at my book, but then I put it down. <laughs> and uh, I, I think that uh, we don't know when everything will be open. In New York City, the halls will open in what's called the fourth phase. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking everything is going to close down until January. Yes. But I think that we have the opportunity to get together in this forum, and we never have or would have probably done this. So I, I thank the Lord for that. And I just want to say one last thing and, and talk, to you, I'm talk about our tra mutual tradition that we come from, because I know I first heard of Baroque music, Adolf Sherbaum's recordings, mm. old recordings of Sherbaum playing. I would Me go too. to the college. I was 14, 13. And I look, I, we haven't talked about it, but I know you checked him out. And I yeah. was like, man, what is this? And then with Edward Tarr and that whole tradition in the early 70s, you know, that was just getting kind of off the ground. Of course, Maurice Andre goes without saying, the, the, the hero of all of us. But I, when, when I see you and we talk about it, I just want to acknowledge our mutual tradition and say uh, thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing you all when we do open these halls up. Yeah, we do. We will do. I, I, what you also don't know, uh, when I did a, a two hours long emission in the German radio, Deutschland Radio, and I had to figure out which is the best recording of all Haydn concertos. And I had to, I, I, I got two, always two examples, and then I had to figure out who is playing. So that was really interesting. Finally, after two hours, there was a number one on the, on the platform. That was you. I, oh, I, I didn't know. I didn't know. And I listened to you and I thought, wow, that is really fantastic. And I, of course, I knew the recording, but to hear them uh, 30, one after the other, Adolf Hörsert, Scherbaum, Güttler, Maurice André, etc., etc. Of course, Hoke and me and, and Matthias Höfs and others. And number one, finally, was your recording. <laughs> well, you know, I appreciate you saying that. I'm I'm emotional, you're gonna make me get full, you know, but we all, we all dealing with the same thing. I appreciate it. I'm glad I wasn't last. <laughs> but it, I, want, I, want to, I only want to express my deep, uh, my deep respect for what you have done in the last four, uh, couple of years. That is unbelievable. Thank you, and that, that respect is more than mutual. And just a beautiful thing is I know the humanity that we're gonna express on this call Today is good for our colleagues to see it because none of it is fake. 
Yeah. And that's a part, that's a, a, a secret to why your playing is so spectacular and why it has the depth of feeling that distinguishes itself far above the technical achievements, which are yeah. substantial. So back to the question, when is coming, <laughs> do, do you think it would be possible once to listen to you with this fantastic piece? I don't know, man. I... <laughs> oh, he doesn't let me play. He told me he don't want to hear me playing classical music no more. <laughs> okay, okay. But I buy the fly, fly ticket. I buy already. <laughs> All right, thank you. Great, thank Open you. date. <laughs> okay. Well, Winton, what, okay. What, what would be your, the, what would be the question you always wanted to ask to Ho Khan? Well, we, we've, we, we've known each other. I've heard about him for so long. You know, in yes. the early 80s when I would be making records with the English Chamber Orchestra, they would also be recording with Hokan. So I, I heard about him very early. I always loved and respected him through many, many years. We, we haven't been in each other's presence a lot. He came to a gig we did in Sao Paulo. And I look at things that he's doing. We, 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 we're joking about the, the Charlie and the, I think, I guess the thing I, I want to ask him is that at our age now, we're, we're people of a certain, a certain age and, and understanding after so many concerts and years of dedication to playing, What, what does he find when he looks into his fundamental concept of, of playing? What does he, what has come to the forefront and, and what does he consider to be the most important thing about playing our instrument in this time? Hello, everyone. It's such an honor <laughs> to be in this company, I must say. And I think that the, the words honor and respect will be the, the words we will use all evening. I mean, um, I met Reinhold first time in the Munich competition. He then looked like some character out of a Wagner opera with <laughs> long hair. And I, I remember I used to call him Reingold. <laughs> and his sound was like gold. And Winton, I don't think we spoke at that time, but I met, I heard you first time when I was a student in Paris and and you came and played with, with Art Blakey and, and Tibo, <laughs> my beloved Thibaut teacher he said, we, we have to go listen to this, this <laughs> kid, he's, he's unbelievable. And, and unbelievable <laughs> you, you truly, truly were. And, and um, it's, it's really great to be here with, with all of you. Um, and you said something about feeling like a kid. You know, I have this, this <laughs> thing, there's, there's a Swedish philosopher and she, she talks about life as a tree, you see one behind me, but not, not only growing this way, you know, we all know about the rings. <laughs> and and if, we, if we allow ourselves to be, we are also the inner ring at the same time as we are the outer ring. So when I see you, I feel very connected to those inner rings of the, of the tree. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and also from me, of course, deepest felt condolences for your, for your dad. You know. Thank you. Um, well, the, tr the trumpet, you know, I'm sure you will all say the same. We, 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 it's part of us now. There's not so much we can, you know, we, right. I, 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 I feel I get up in the morning and I brush, brush my teeth and, and I play the trumpet. I mean, there are things that has to happen. And, and I think what I end up doing every morning is again feeling, feeling like a child actually, that, that inner ring from the eight-year-old child come, comes back every morning and I, I, I work a lot on the centering of the sound and I, I have to do that every morning to really find, find the middle of the sound which is something I can then expand from and, and find the resonance in, in my body and in the horn and then, then ultimately in, in the hall I play. But if I don't have the center to work with, then, then uh, there's nothing. So that, that would be the one fundamental that's, that's the most. So can I, I want to I just ask you a question to go deeper into that. Like, can you, can you tell when you're actually in the center of your sound, is your posture related to the center of your sound? And do, do you think the sound starts with the, with, the, with the breath or does it start with the initial attack? I think it's, it's a matter of, of, of balance. I think if, you're, if your posture and your, and your body is, is not tensed and then, and then it's a balance between the two things we have. We have, we have the breath and we have 
the vibration of the lips. And, and too much of one of them in this balance is, is, is not good. They, they need both to be, I, 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 I start always with these very simple bending notes, very soft mm -hmm. and everything, but, but that's me. And you know, I think every, everyone will have a different way of finding center and balance, but that's how I do it, yeah. Well, I want to ask you about, do you have anything in your mind before you when, you, when you go to hit your initial notes, are you thinking about something, I want to hit this note like this? Are you only singing the note? Are you thinking, do you have anything? Sing, singing, singing the note, singing and fe feeling, feeling the note. And then once you, once you capture it to, to make it live in the, in the, in the body, in, in, the, in the cavities and, and, and the, but the, it's, it, of course it starts with a, something here. I mean, uh, the, these are, are, I mean, they're more important than, than the lips. Right. Uh, ultimately, and if, and if it doesn't, if it doesn't start with 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 with, a, with the ears or an idea, then mm -hmm. we can use the lips or the lungs as much as we like. Nothing will happen. So can can we can we go out of order and just can I just ask as Randall just something because yes. I'm I really uh, I want I want us to get to a a thing about this kind of initial attack, initial playing. You know how the scientists always trying to get back to the original particle. They call it the God particle. Yeah. So. Could could just about before the initial attack. I'm, How are you? For me, for me, it's uh, it's about coming to this point zero, to 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 be to be ready for playing. It means if if I'm if I'm empty, this the sound starts already with the breathing. I I feel. I feel with uh -huh. the breathing and with this be, being totally empty and 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 inviting each note and of course then also this hearing the note before you play it uh, that is very important but it's it's the the breathing and the playing is not two acts it's one act right right, right right yeah so uh, that, that, if i if i may quote our beloved Thibaut, you know he he, he was <laughs> trained on the he was trained on the violin as a kid yeah and he, and he always used to say he used to say you know, on the violin, there is 5,000 ways to play one note. On the, trumpet, <laughs> on the trumpet, we have two. We get it or we miss it. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then he said, if you can have 10, if you can have 10 different <laughs> ways to start, you know, then you have a language. <laughs> then you have a language. So I want to I wanna conclude what I'm asking you for this time. And I want to ask about after you hit a note, you know, we hit them and we have, you know, <laughs> you're working with them. So I mean, just in the warm up, you're starting off and you, your initial attack, it comes in as it maybe it's not exactly how you heard, but you start to ease, ease into it. Do you find that as you relax, your pitch falls or do you find that you start low and you get higher? What do you do as you go through, let's say an initial kind of long tone warm up? Are there adjustments you're thinking about making? You try to relax your shoulders well, have different tensions and stuff. But me, my shoulders always come up. So I'm always kind of asking myself to yeah. sit down and I'm asking myself to try to find the biggest sound at the softest volume. So do you have a thing that you're trying to do in the inside of that sound to manipulate it, to make it be the way you want it to be? I mean, that's a huge, huge, huge question because that, I mean, that's all related to to what environment that special note is living in, what you hear from the band or the orchestra, and, and, and then to be open enough so that your body can react to what you hear. And, and, and it's, it's about openness, I guess. I mean, there, there, there was another interesting uh, thing that people always used to say, you used to say play towards the back. And you know, it, it means nothing in effect. But then there was some guy in Paris whose brother was an X-ray, X-ray doctor, and they, he said he filmed him in the machine, and he said, "Now think towards the back," and they could actually see cavities opening uh, just by thinking. You know, things that we can't control, much as we can't really control the diaphragm. Mm. So I, I think I think. I mean, your question is so big because it's one thing is what goes on during the day and how we how we treat our, I mean, we all have our, 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 our reoccurring 
um, things that will, will will create problems or will, will, will so those are we we try to watch you know uh, but then there is the possibilities of, of finding uh, different colors and, and those uh, I think there are tools I think there are tools for everything if you have the ten if you have ten attacks or if you have ten ways of starting then then the rest is maybe reaction and letting letting the body react to to what right. you hear and what what you want to do. I don't know if that answers your question, but the question was very very big. <laughs> yeah, right. No, no, no. I understand. Great, thank you, uh, Hokan. What what would you like to 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 ask to Reinhold? Hmm, Reinhold, it's so lovely. To, it's so lovely to see you. First of all, I must say, uh, and and uh, I still I still look very often in that book that you gave me about you know the, the pictures from of Mother Earth. Yeah, do you remember? Yeah. And 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 I and I I think, oh my God, what are we doing to this planet? Uh, uh, but but. Uh, I was thinking of, it's also quite a big question because, and it relates to how we met in a competition, how I heard Winton in Paris and we were kids and, and we grew up, I think we grew up in the best times to, I mean, we could hear, we could hear Miles and Chet, we could hear Doc Schitzer and, 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 and Maurice André and we could hear, we could, but, but we had to go and hear them. If we wanted yeah. to hear them live, we 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 could get records and buy records, but if we wanted to really hear them, we had to do like Bach did when he wanted to hear books to who he walked yeah, right. he walked halfway <laughs> through Germany to hear him, <laughs> and, and I think that that sort of curiosity today can of course in a in a way be cured just by one simple click well for the young ones it's simple for me i could hardly get onto this channel <laughs> we saw that today <laughs> yeah <laughs> you can see but, it just to see but do you think it's do you think it makes it does it make it harder or or, or easier for the younger people this yeah. how, how to collect what, what what will give them the ideas you know how how how, how do you think they collect that or, or yeah. what do you think could you elaborate on it, I guess? Yeah, yeah. I, I try to understand what you mean. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, it's a process. You can never, you can never uh, replace to go to a concert and to listen the real thing. But uh, as trumpet players, uh, I think we have a lot, a lot to, to listen to. We have to find our ideals in the trumpet, in the trumpet world but perhaps even more in other worlds. For me, I, I, in my practice room, I have uh, on one wall, I have Claudio as one of my ideals, and on the others is Andra Schiff, uh, the piano player, and Fritz Wunderlich. And this, to listen to them, to, to build up an idea of what music means, when I when I'm get together with Andra Schiff, how uh, he plays the piano, it's it sounds so amazing it's a totally completely different instrument so this sort of uh, finding sounds and and listen to music and also finally then to find the process for an interpretation to 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 re, to give old pieces new life what we always do we we are we are not always playing uh, creations like you <laughs> I, I for example I play a lot of times this old chip and uh, and also <laughs> Winton plays a lot of times uh, the traditional things and gives new life and for them and that is uh, the f the most fascinating process I think what we have and young people have to build that up and they have to listen they have to listen they have to listen that is what I what I uh, uh, tell my my students and that is what I tell myself I, mm -hmm. I don't stop with this process I, 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 I look when I when I remember the last period when Claudio was uh, conducting the ninth symphony of Bruckner suddenly he stopped he opened his little score he had the score from Toscanini 
nine, it was Eulenburg, a very small thing. And he opened it and he was completely upset. He said, did you see that? He is an accent. He is an accent. I have never seen this accent. Second flute, can you play this accent? I have never heard that. I have never seen. So in, in the last moment of his uh, life uh, uh, appearance on stage, he was so like a child. He was so open. And, and then, yeah, the, this moment is in my heart very, very deep that you have the responsibility, as you said, when you start in the morning, you have to be a child and you have to find everything new. If you so, don't do this process, you are lost. So you, 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 start, you start in the morning as a child and then you, <laughs> there, there, was a, there was a beautiful, uh, they asked Casals, Casals when he was 94, why, why are you still practicing six hours a day, Mr. Casals? And he says, oh, you know, I think I'm still making progress. <laughs> so I, I guess what, what I wanted, what I wanted to you to elaborate on is this, this fact that it is, what we do is a really, really slow thing. And yeah. even, even, you know, one lifetime is not enough. Uh, it, it's, it, we, we take it from somewhere and we bring it as, as, as far as we can. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That, and, and, and when these people, Casals and, and Winton and you and Claudio do this their whole life, then little Reinhold in little Kernbach, oh. in the little <laughs> village, <laughs> has to follow the spirit. Stop this. <laughs> yes. Are, are, you, are you fishing? Are you fishing? Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, we have just in front of the house, we have a little river, so I go there yeah. sometimes. <laughs> Reinhold. Uh, yeah. Sorry to interrupt now, but, but maybe what, what would be your question for Hokan then? Yeah, I mean, my question for Hokan. Um, my, <laughs> Something uh, I, captivating. I, that, is, th that was not so easy to uh, find the question because uh, Hokan, you have, you have done nearly everything what is possible. You have created uh, tons of concerts you have played everywhere you have played with all orchestras you have reached all uh, highest mountains there is the mount everest for you is only a sidewalk um, <laughs> on the, I, I have really a question for you which was also which was a question i i asked myself also what is uh, still a dream for you what want to what do you want to what is still a dream which you keep in your mind to to go on to 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 make uh, next well at the moment is that i i i, I don't uh, completely mess up charlie a number seven <laughs> <laughs> This is typical all kinds. You know, it's, I, I don't count. I don't think any of us counts in. You know, we don't count it like some show, you know, animal trophy that we have. Yeah. Like hunters. It's that's not how it works. You know, we we we, we try to be the inner ring and the outer ring and to and to play. And I I guess I'm I'm also. You, you, you search, you search for the, for the, I mean, I don't compose. I don't invent in the moment as Winton does. And, and, and I, mm. I love listening to, to jazz players doing that. I, I search for the masterpiece. Mm. You know? and, and as you very rightly said, you know, the, the, when Ed introduced us to the, this, this piece by Bent Alice Zimmerman, that was... And he put it on the, on the music stand. Yes, I mean, that, that saved our two uh, artistic lives for quite a while. And then, and then we, I, I tried with, with, with others and to, to build this. And so, yeah. so that, that it will be something for great conductors and great orchestras to be interested in. And that, that I will have a story to tell also, because... Uh, that's what we need. We need we need something where we can fill the clothes of an actor and and be be the part and and and, and do what what is our trade. And so I guess I will just uh, 
continue doing that like like some sort of long distance runner until I until I stumble on, on, on Can I ask you <laughs> yeah. something? Maybe, maybe uh, Murakami, the writer, he he says, you know, that that I guess, you know, next year I will have written another novel and run another marathon and maybe I look in the future and I put one foot ahead and then maybe one day I will achieve something that's, that's anything like what I would like to do. I, I, I couldn't agree more. We, we just, we continue like long distance runners. But you started with conducting. Yeah, but that's like, that's, I, I like it. I like it very much, but it's, you know, it's nothing... Uh, you know, if, if, if two lifetimes is needed for a trumpet, I'm sure it's the same for conducting. And it's, that's more like my pension fund, you know, when the teeth okay. fall out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because I, I saw that you start and then I thought, okay, when he starts, I have to do it also. So I, I have, next year I have my premiere also. <laughs> Great. What do you, what do you conduct? <laughs> I will conduct the first symphony of Schubert because it's a very unknown piece, and so the people will not kill me in the first moment. Then I play the Hummel <laughs> trumpet concerto, and after the pause, I will play. Uh, I will conduct the Fire. It's called the Haydn Symphony. Fire. It's a wild. It's a very wild Haydn Symphony, and I think it's a beautiful program. It's a bit unknown pieces, and when you start to do something, it's better you take yourself a little bit to the side of the crit criticisms uh, <laughs> pistol <Right>. shot. <laughs> you, got, right. you, have your, you have your hands full. Uh, yeah. bef before we go That's to the last question, oh sorry, Winston, you want to say something? No, 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 go ahead, I'm just uh, co-signing. Before we go to the last question between Hokan and Winston, uh, if you want to prepare you uh, for the next chapter, uh, um, Reinhold and Enrico, feel free. Uh, between uh, Hokan and Winton. Hokan, what is your secret question about Winton? <laughs> I actually have two. Is that okay? Oh, yes. Please. <laughs> well, one, one, one is, is a gossip one. Uh, because uh, there is this myth. There's a myth that, that Bernstein, Bernstein was about to write a trumpet concerto. And is, that, is there any truth in that? No, I don't. That's... I, did, yeah. I didn't discuss it with him, uh, but, okay. but I, you know, I didn't, I didn't, discuss, but I, I mean, I loved him and I talked with him. He, he was always full of uh, advice and insight and he was always extremely uh, friendly and supportive. When I, when I was, when I told him I was trying to teach a concerts for young children, I looked at his, his, uh, his concerts and everything. And we, we still, we talked about harmony. And I said, I said, how do you, I read the lesson you wrote on, on harmony maestro. He said, he said, man, harmony is the most difficult thing in the world uh, to figure out. He said, because it's horizontal and it's vertical, it's positional, it's things change. He said, it's exactly like a room full of people. He said, and it's almost impossible to figure out, is there a rule or a way for a bunch of people to interact? He said, I did the best I could, but when you figure that one out, I probably won't be here. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then question one uh, B. This is not second question. Question one B <laughs> um, is: is uh, Will you will you write a trumpet concerto one day? I'm I'm supposed to be writing from one for Mike in in in, in, uh, in Cleveland. You know Mike Sachs. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love Mike. It's another another example where I heard about him when I was fourteen or fifteen. And wow. He, he's also 1961, right? Isn't he? Yeah, I think he's. 61. He, he, I thought he was younger than me, yeah. but, I, but I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. But I, you know, I I definitely want to do it, Great. and I, I you know I want to I want to work on it. But I mean, I, my love for our instrument is so deep. I just don't want to write something that when you hear it, you think, "Damn, it took a trumpet player to do that." <laughs> to, <laughs> to, but I, I uh, yeah, I'm gonna write something. I, I know I'm sure I'm gonna write something for Mike. You know. That's great. That's great. 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 You know. Now, now question number two, um, and this one is is bigger because it's about it's about Rhino's question about the Zimmerman. It's about uh, when I premiered the Hensel Requiem, um, which was around the first 
Iraq war, and hence I wrote this requiem, a humanistic requiem. It was <coughs> the times of the AIDS era, and and there was a you know a, a plague almost like we have now. And, and and there was a journalist who asked Henze, so Mr. Henze, do you think that your music can can make the world world better? And Henze looked very sad and he said oh well you know i'm not florence nightingale <laughs> you know he, he he kind of so i i think he he because the reason for him to write it must have been that he thought he had these ideas uh, and then he of course realized that he couldn't i mean what what are your thoughts on that Winton? what uh, that can can music can we as musicians do something in this unbelievably terrible world we have at the moment? Well, first, I think affirmatively, yes. We're doing something right now. Yeah. And um, what we're doing is not less than something that you could tell somebody and they would say, "That's wow, you, you did something. Because the world is a large place and there are a lot of different people and agendas and problems and issues and solutions and, and beautiful, terrible, tragic, and we all have lives that have all of those things in them. And by the time you get to our ages, we've been through a lot. We're not, we, we feel like children, but we're not children. Mm. You know, we're at the age where hopes and dreams and things we thought will work out, many of them did not work out. Mm. So the way that we keep our optimism and our positivity and that we're not fake. Uh, now in America, of course, I'm called upon Right now, I'm in the middle of a whole thing about what statement I'm going to make about the policeman killing yeah. George Floyd and Black Lives Matter and Black people yeah. and white people. And you know, I grew up in the '60s in, in America in in, uh, in segregation. I grew up in the South in small towns, and dealt with a lot of prejudice and ignorance. And have, and it's not just white and black. It's, there's a when I travel around the world, the first thing I noticed, I'll tell you, my first experience was I was in Poland in 1980 for Jazz Jamboree. And I met with some other younger people my age, and I was under the impression at that time that Eastern Europe and everything that was said about it was not true. I'm from America, I'm black, people messing over us all the time, everything you read is a lie, this too is a lie. Hmm. Man, I'm talking to them and there's nobody on the street at night. And they say, man, we can't get caught out here on the street. And it was just a reality that I, that I, that I, I, I had about human beings and how they live on earth your frame of reference is often not enough for you to understand something like the world so i believe everything we do matters i believe that I, i'm engaged with it every day you know and it's not a, it's not a topical issue it's not because of the disease and the kind of tribalism and ignorance and homelessness and uh injustice and things that are part of the legacy of, of the earth that we're always working to get toward a deeper humanity it requires all of us to celebrate the greatest achievements of all of us and not to segregate those achievements to fit into a constituency because that constituency has juice or because their point of view is popular at a certain time. So I think also for us, the three of us at our age, we're too old to be chasing behind trends. You know, we have, a, we have the thing we believe in our humanity and what we've said down through the years, there's a track record of what we believe and the type of love and respect we address each other with is the way we would talk to, to students with, is the way we would talk about issues in a thoughtful way when we're called upon to speak on them. And we've already done a lot of that and we will continue to do it. So our music and music itself definitely changes the world. And music is not a topical issue. No. Mm. You know, it's not topical. It's, it's, it's a thing that the music of, you take your pick, you know, depending on what culture's music you understand. And I'll go mm. back to what Randall was saying about not just trumpet, yeah. But all, all kinds of music, all arts. It could be Paco de Luthi and Flamenco music, or it could be Osvaldo Pugliese in, in, in tango, or it could be the travail of Shostakovich in, in, in Russian music, or it could be, it does not matter what culture you want to find, you will find people who have been warriors for, for our larger human heritage. And I think, I think, I know we're all in agreement with that just by how natural our our, our relationship is with each other. So, you know, that's, that, that's what I believe. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Winton. Thank you, Hokan. 
I think we will go now to another uh, interesting part with uh, But uh, Olivier, yes. Vincent, question to me. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, I thought you did it before, but... <laughs> okay. Uh, no, don't worry, man. We didn't come on, man. You're not going to do this to us, Olivia. We only we want to want to vibe with each other, man. We don't stick to a form. <laughs> <laughs> We're you older know. than you. Respect your elders, son. Yes. <laughs> you know, I'm Swiss, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 I accept. Really? Okay. Tell me. Yes. Go ahead. No, no. Go ahead. Tell me. No, no, you don't, no. You don't mind. We're playing around. Yes. Reynold. Another question. <laughs> No, I uh, should have gave you an F from in your class. Me missing. Uh, Winton, Winton, you, you probably you have another question for Reinhardt. <laughs> he was getting ready to tell, ask me something. <laughs> <laughs> you want? I to do have something. a question, I, it, but if you had, if you wanted to ask me a question, I'll answer it. I'll be brief, I promise, and then I'll ask the question <laughs> I have for Reinhardt. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm happy with in the moment with questions. Okay. <laughs> I'm <laughs> so, so, Winton, your question to Reinhold. Well, it, it has to do with what with, 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 with Olivier is showing us right now with young people not really having manners. I want to know. <laughs> 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 I want to know what it, I, I would like to know what it is. If, and, I, and I know we all teach, and there's a lot of things to teach. But yeah. everything you teach comes out of one thing. So if you what is the fundamental key to your teaching your pedagogy like the way what is the fundamental thing you want a student to know when they leave your tutelage or even after like olivier is still in my tutelage i'm not ever letting him go i'm gonna be 100 and i'm gonna still be talking to him like he's 20. so what is it that uh i i i have i have made last year a meeting i i rented a whole castle in france and I invited all my 160 students I have had in my life in the castle. And we had one week, we had one week together and we discussed and played and had party from morning to night. And, and then I thought about that. What is, what is happening when you, when you choose somebody that he will be your student. And a lot of times after an audition, I went to a guy, and I told him, look, you play very nice. Uh, I don't need you. You don't need me. Go ahead. You will find your teacher, but it's not me. Uh -huh. And then I see a young boy or a young girl who is touching me. And then I say, this is the person I will give lessons. It needs this in, 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 initiation. Uh, I, in, initiation. I need this moment that I get somehow interested in this person because then uh, a lifelong process starts we exchange our ideas we exchange uh, our whole family problems tragedies whatever and uh, it's um, it goes very very deep and the only reason i have the i have the most crazy trumpet class it's a lot of a lot of chaotic people and very uh, <laughs> all are totally different. I don't search the same student. Be, be all careful, the, be, careful I mean, I, be careful. I think they might be listening. <laughs> <laughs> but they know it. They are totally crazy. And uh, that is what I, what I try to collect. To, I try to find people who touch me in, 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 in my heart. Because the, the whole process, what happens after, is love. I mean, that is, even if they have not practiced. <laughs> <laughs> it's still love what you have to be right. uh, and sometimes you make love in combination with something else but uh, right. love is the motor for the whole thing to 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 get in contact to to think about their little next step what they have to do to 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 find their that they find their inner center i i always what I tried to ex express in this way. I think I, I s try to see the inner diamond of somebody and then we work on the facet. Then yeah. we work that he is really shining and that his form is really related to the person. That because okay. everybody is different. 
Yeah. And nobody does the same career as somebody else. Everybody has his own long life way. Beautiful. I love that. I'm, I'm writing it down. You see me reaching, I just want to write it down. I love it. <laughs> you see the inner diamond and you work on the facets. That you polish it up. I love it. <laughs> yeah. What, what, you, what you saying about that, Hokan? What you... I think that's, I can only agree. It's beautiful words. Yeah. Uh, Reinhold, yeah. would you like yeah, to go to... To, yeah. To I, I think you expressed um, a deep wish to pay tribute to someone tonight as well. For, yeah. Uh, for us. Yeah. Uh, give some uh, words. Yeah. Uh, I have. <laughs> I I I I'm still in involved in like like uh, like you, Winton, with the loss of your father, and I'm and I'm involved in the loss of this man, this who comes from. From the states and who gave me and Hokan so much and uh, this man when you listen uh, to his recordings and he's playing the trumpet completely different than a lot of other trumpet players he doesn't search the heroic uh, part of the trumpet so much he's he's uh, somehow uh, he was a very uh, warm-hearted and soft person and his interpretation of the Hummel concerto in his early 60s for me still is the best recording in the in the world and what he did with all his work with all his life long work is amazing and uh, but he, he touched the very important point for me that is wh why is the trumpet especially in the time of Gustav Mahler transferring uh, the yan, yanning, the the nostalgia, the the, the, the this is a, a totally different um, uh, new habit of character, and mm -hmm. that is uh, and that is what comes from this old story that from Peter von Seckingen, this fairy tale which is has really uh, truth elements uh, in near Basel in Switzerland. There's this castle and this uh, trumpet player who fall in love is the princess and he has to leave. And that's not only a fairy tale, it has really a um, uh, uh, historic uh, basic. And from this piece, Gustav Mahler was so much impressed that he composed his opus number zero, which is what's called the Trompeter von Senkingen. That it was Gustav Mahler's first piece and then the only he destroyed it, and the only piece which survived was the Blumine, this movement of the of the first symphony, which sometimes is in the concert, or most of the time they play it without. But this Blumine is the survivor of this uh, trompeta von Seking from Gustav Mahler, and I think this big gift that Gustav Mahler gave the trumpet to have a new expression is leading my playing, is leading a uh, all generations after, included Enesco and all these people who, who did their compositions after. Uh, Oscar Böhme, a bit of the same with this ideal of the Mendelssohn Bartholdi violin concerto in E minor. He composed also his E minor concerto. So these people changed the the big possibilities of the trumpet, which was before a, yeah, a stupid soldier instrument to win the war, with some exceptions of Baroque high points, but uh, that is not the most in important literature. But with this, we found uh, to a new stand, uh, to a new standard, and that's why I want to play this piece for you. Thank you. Great. That's Thank you. Okay.
<laughs> yeah. Hey, that was some. That was that was good accompaniment too. <laughs> My wife. Yeah. My that wife. was beautiful. That was fantastic. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> and uh, this this music inspired. Uh, Mala for Blumine, for the post on solo, for fifth Mala solos, for every, uh, all play, uh, solos, in, and this changed our our trumpet life somehow. And that's it comes also the research and the trumpet museum is Edward H. Tarr's thing, and he got half his page in the New York Times after he was passed away, and uh, I think he worked hard for this his small yes. life. Thank you. Thank, thank you for giving me this thank time. You. Thank you for that beautiful playing. Yeah. But you see that that's what we're talking about. Like just the kind of the kind of heart and soul in your playing. It just that that's, that just is, you know. It's okay. I mean it, it lifted but up. I was pretty nervous. I mean, <laughs> can you believe I was really nervous? <laughs> Why? You're nervous Why? for us. Why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're not nervous for us. We we have we have the age we're in the age of understanding. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, Reinhold. Thank you, Eriko. That was really moving. Yeah. And, and yes, we we are a lot uh, online. We are more than two hundred on on Zoom and around six hundred on Facebook. So that's amazing, and it's nice to see you all here. And we are uh, representing 40 different countries on Zoom. Wow. And all wow. five continents are represented as well. So that makes me very uh, happy. And it's a, a good sign that everyone wow. is there. Fantastic. Great. Um, of course, a lot of um, trumpet players from uh, the entire world uh, have shown interest in your unique historical meeting. And um, of course, some of them are. Uh, Kind of uh, well known, and uh, I asked them if they wanted to say maybe a little hello, and they say, of course, yes, with pleasure. So please uh, welcome, yes, uh, now uh, Matthias. Matthias, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Hi. Hello, Hi. Matthias. <laughs> What's going on, Matthias? <laughs> Hi, Matthias. <laughs> so fantastic to see you, and Reinhard, thank you for your playing. It's uh, fantastic in this time to come together and. Uh, it's a great uh, pleasure for me to to involve in this and um, to hear and, and you speaking. Um, uh, like the time uh, I was very young, I hear your CDs and your recording and um, thank you for, for your music. Uh, and you are a great um, point for all musicians and trumpet players all in the, over the world and inspiration for all this. Thank you. Uh, and hello from Hamburg. <laughs> well, thank you, Matthias. Thank you. Would you like to say something to Matthias? Uh, or do you have a question for Matthias? Is he, is he, are you trying to make us feel old, Matthias? <laughs> he, he, he's talk, not talking about just your playing. <laughs> <laughs> you are so young. So <laughs> fantastic. And your music. There's, something, there's something wrong with the light in your. You, we can't see any gray ha gray hairs on you. Yeah, that's unfair. Unfair. Yeah, it's unfair. It's light unfair. In my room. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, Matthias, for this sign. It was great. Thank you. And let's go to the second very special <laughs> attendee, uh, Alison. Wow. <laughs> What's up, Alison? Uh, hello. Hello, Alison. <laughs> Thank you so much for organising this. It's such an important thing to do, and <laughs> you know, musicians in this time are so vital to the world. You know, not only with you know the notes that we play and the amazing music that we get to play, but also with the, the things that are said. Um, you know, talking about love like this, Reinhold, was incredibly important. Yeah. The things that um, you've said, Winton, today, and um, these are things that I will personally remember for many years. Um, probably for the rest of my life and I also remember when I had some lessons with you Hulk and it's great to see you again that really I, to see you, Alison. Very lessons, nice to see you. Uh, there were things that both as a musician and as a person I kept close to me and I will remember forever and when I talk to students myself and and, and just people not necessarily trumpet players they're they're words of wisdom that I feel that I can pass on from you to the next generation and I think that means I think that just is 
you know, it's, is, is the example of what it is that we're talking today and uh, which is wonderful that this is happening, but it's, it's, it's creating this positivity and this positive energy through music. And um, th all three of you have been huge inspirations for me um, throughout my life. And, and so that's why this is so great that this is happening. So thank you. Thank you so much for doing this. It's, it's very generous of the three of you. Lovely to see you. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, great you. to see you. It's fantastic to see you. I think Winston, me and you are supposed to have an event tonight. So this is the okay. I, I look forward to it. You know, come on. Always. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Alison, for joining us. It was great. Yeah, thank and you. also, uh, Alison, thank you for what you do, uh, especially as a woman for fighting that the women have the right, same place like all these fat three guys. No, Hogan is not so fat. <laughs> But me, uh, and, 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 you, and you are su such an ideal for, for hundreds, thousands of young girls who, are, uh, who get the courage because of your career. And I see that, I hear that in the Royal Academy. I see that everywhere uh, you gave them very, very much help. And uh, thanks for this. Thank you for saying so. I think we're all aiming for the same thing. We're all trying to yes, say something important with music, try to be, whether we're female or male, whatever our background, we're trying yeah. to be good, not just trumpet players, but good musicians, good artists, and have something important to say and share but, with the world. So, yeah, but, but the women sometimes have harder, uh, harder uh, work to, to get this place. I, I see that. And uh, uh, still there is a lot of chauvinism in the trumpet world. And I hope we can step by step throw this on the, on the trash. Yeah, and right. that is, and you help to do that. Thank you, thank you, and thank you for your recordings. I've listened to them more than you probably have so much. <laughs> I'd never listen to my recordings. <laughs> <laughs> it's useless time to listen to their own recordings, but made for others. Yeah. Thank you, thank you so much, Alison. Yes. Now let's go to our third surprise, Sergey. Hello. Hello <laughs> hi. To you. I just hi, hi. would like to I just would like to, to briefly say hello to all of you. Um, <laughs> it's amazing to see uh, to see all of you here and thank you so much for inspiration all these years. I wish you most importantly great health and to stay safe during these times. And um, I wish one day we could uh, meet each other properly. Yes, we, 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 have to, we have to stop. We have to stop meeting like this. I've, I've, only, met, I've only met you like this. <laughs> it's true. So just uh, thank you. And um, I actually, I had one question for Winton, but it's yeah. almost the same that Hocken asked uh, about uh, composition. I wanted to ask Winton if uh, there was any plan to write uh, anything for trumpet and piano. No, but you know, I mean, I just work on stuff to, to work on it. So if you want me to write something for you, I'll write it. You just gotta, we just, just communicate. And uh, it's, it's great to, to, to talk with you. I just seen you always reminds me of the great trumpet player, Lou Soloff. He passed away. He was a great yeah, the friend. First, the first time I heard your recording of you playing was through Lou. And Lou called me and he was like, man, you have to hear this kid from Russia. You, you're like a teenager. <laughs> yeah, we, we put on your recording. We were both, we were both been there listening to it going crazy. <laughs> Just about, you know, the, the quality of your playing and the depth of it. And uh, you, Lou, Lou has passed away now, but I just, every, down through all these years, man, whenever, whenever I, I've seen you, of course, that's many, many years ago. I, I always uh, connect you in the beauty of your playing with, mm -hmm. with Lou's love of trumpet playing, his love of you and your playing. And of course, I've seen you and respect you, but it, it's good to see you up here. And I, we just rap about it and yeah, I work on something. You tell me how you want it to be and we'll do it. I'd be honored. So, all right. Ma, thank you. And yeah. stay safe, all of you. Yes, sir. Deep arm. Deep arm. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you, Sergey. Thank you. It was a pleasure to see you. Thank you for joining. And now we will go to questions from the audience. And I'm happy to call Jeffrey Wolbach in USA. Can you hear me, Jeffrey? Yes, sir. Please, Hi. Your, your question. Hello. And maybe yes, where do you so, come from? Uh, okay, my name is Jeff Wolbach. I'm from Allentown, Pennsylvania in the United States. And uh, my question is for the big three, all of you. 
Um, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about your relationship and maybe some of the important learning points from your most influential teacher or teachers related to trumpet or musicianship in general. And uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, okay, uh, what, sorry. Okay. Who <laughs> yeah, should start? Yeah, 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 this is my turn. Yeah, I, I mean, who wants to, to ask first? It's up to you. Um, I don't, who can? The, but the youngest. How, how, long, how long do we have? <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I, I think we, we collect, Alison was saying, you know, we, we, we get all these things, all these gifts from previous generations, we assimilate them and then, and, and I think the relation between us is, is obvious. I mean, it's, it's just humble, I feel so humble with these guys and, and, and we, we uh, we keep doing our best and we, 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 we remember constantly, you know, like we remember, we, we laugh with the laughs of our fathers mm. and, we, yeah. we, and we, we say things like our fathers and then we add a little and then I can hear my son laughing and he laughs a bit like me and like my grandfather and, you know, and, and, and it goes on and on like this and I think, um, that's all organic and we can we can talk about details and, and and traditions and that it's that it's not so long ago you know i mean if we look back in at the paris tradition thibault sabarish franquin and then we're already back in you know a long time back we think but not so, long. so i think i think it's you know, I, I, I'm answering maybe a little bit too philosophically, but 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 the the, the details are too many. Mm. Okay, thank you, Reinhold. Yeah, I, um, it's it's perhaps the same process how you would by yourself find in going step by step each new day, new month, new year to go forward to the end of this sausage because each sausage has the beginning and the end and we go to the end finally we go straight ahead and on this way you look of course sometimes forward and a lot of times you look also backwards also in music in music history but what are your your roots and then i then you see okay i'm i learned this from this teacher and i learned this from this teacher and uh, now i it's combined in my in my own doing um so the the roots are going back to Gottfried Reiche. Uh, I drink this evening, I drink my red wine from Fantini. <laughs> and we know Gerolamo Fantini was in the Renaissance. He was the trumpet player of Frescobaldi. So uh, um, I, I, and I, I discovered, for example, in my, all, all in my old family, which I didn't realize when I was a young man, that I'm not alone. I have here a grand uncle, he is in the orchestra there, he is a grand uncle, he was in the so-called Entartete Kunst, uh, 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 what is that called, Entartete Kunst, uh, can you help me? The, uh, part of the fugue. The, uh, out of the fugue. Yeah, the, 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 this this not accepted by the, oh. by the Nazis, not accepted, uh, politically uh, de degenerated art. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's like something like that. And he was a painter and he had to flow away and uh, uh, to rescue his life. So step by step, you look forward, backward, and your personality gets more and more aspects inside of you, like the example of Hokan, which was wonderful poetic with the tree, the inside and the outside. And um, that makes the life so interesting and never one day is boring. Right. Thank you. And Winton? No, I, I agree. We're part of an extended family. It goes back to Gottfried Reich. Um, in America, it's Francis Johnson and Patrick Gilmore and great trumpet players of the 19th century, Herbert Clark, then Buddy Bolden, Louis Armstrong, that strain of people playing. And then, of course, the modern uh, trumpet players, Adolf Herseth, Clifford Brown, and that strain. And then, then mm. up to the, to the tradition we have today, Phil Smith, kind of the, all many of 
people in the tradition we've known we know each other and how the three of us are related is when we come together you have a lot of the tradition mm. you know how many times gabor and i have sat down and we just talk about lessons and teachers and we're talking about dog shit and we're talking about tibo and we cover all the same material the same teachers and material and pieces and we have a shared heritage and uh so far as the most important thing my father was a teacher for me and he was a, a great teacher he taught through analogy but the greatest lesson I ever had was from my mother who was struggling to carry my artistic brother in a parade when I was 11. And I kept asking her to let me carry my brother. So an hour passed, she was still holding him. I was seeing her shift her weight around. I said, let me hold it. And she said, how heavy something is depends on how you feel about carrying it. Mm -hmm. So I always kept that with me my entire life. Mm -hmm. So that we can carry a part of the legacy of our instrument is a great legacy and we are all a part of being custodians of it, as is Sergey, as you are. And as anybody on this call, we have teachers, we have students, we have fathers, grandfathers, grandmothers, sisters, as Allison came on and spoke, she's a custodian of our instrument. So we're all a part of one, one, uh, one, one thing. And as we have a love and respect for one another and one another's opinions, we don't have to always have the same opinion, but we all have paid dues to the trumpet and to music, and we all uh, have respect for the dues that each other uh, have paid. So. Mm. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. We, thank you, Jeffrey. We will go to the next question with Zoran Kazakov in Europe, in Switzerland. Zoran, can you hear, hear us? Yes, hi. Hi for three of uh, Big Three. And thank you for uh, all you do it for this uh, more of uh, more years and inspire me. And I'm originally from Macedonia, but uh, still 25 years I'm living in Switzerland. And thank you for leaving it, organize it, uh, this wonderful emission. And sorry if, about my English. And my question is uh, uh, for three of you: Did you have uh, some dream, some some uh, uh, piece recording or chamber music, something doing some some dream you you, you never do it before? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, who wants to start? Uh, maybe Winton. No, I, I couldn't understand if he meant that I heard a piece or I wanted to play a piece. Like a piece or of some, some music you didn't play yet and you would like maybe to play in the future some some. Oh man, it's like so, that. It's, it's, I, wish I, I wish I could say to a piece, no, it's, it's so many for me, I can't pick, pick one. I'm going to turn it over to my, to my brethren. Okay. <laughs> and Hokan and Reinhold, maybe? You have something that you would like to play in the future and you never played yet? Yeah. I, I'm just on a, on, a, on a little project after I, I throw down uh, to do a recording with French music, but everything is already recorded. So I, 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 somehow I, I, I came to this point to make research about politically persecuted composers and Jewish composers in the time of Nazis uh, in this time before and of course also time after. And there's, I thought, okay, about some particular pieces. I heard from one composer which was new in the musical world, Hans Winterberg. He was in the car, in concentration camp in Theresienstadt and I, I listened to a radio uh, emission about him. And the first <coughs> piece he composed was for trumpet and piano after coming out from the concentration camp. Now I have the manuscript of this piece and th that gave me the idea, wow, that is a field where it is for the trumpet world not enough done. Now I have in the, in, in the last, in, that was the coronavirus uh, special time uh, because the, I have never so many uh, free hours than today in the last uh, two months. And I have now material for six or seven CDs, trump three trumpet concerto CDs could have be done. Uh, a, a man like Anne Frank, who 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 was uh, surviving in the canalization of the and, uh, Amsterdam, and he composed a trumpet concerto, which is be extremely beautiful uh, concert over B A C H. Uh, for trumpet and orchestra and 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 it's a big long story but but this is a real dream for me to do that in the next two three four five years thank you I would say, yeah i would say 
the first dream the first dream is that we soon enough have big symphony orchestras back. <laughs> uh, I, I, I desperately need them and, and uh, because also a couple of pieces I mean are coming they're in the pipeline there will be a concerto by Jörg Wittmann uh, wow. that I'm, I'm looking forward to and Helen Grime a uh, wonderful British composer so those are the two very obvious things that I am I'm looking forward to very much and, and, and and it's each new piece like that is, of course, like a new, like unknown territory to discover. Yeah. So, so sitting here, uh, you know, I, I I I love being home. It's it's wonderful. But but I, I'm I'm longing for those undiscovered undiscovered territories. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Zoran, for your question. Yeah. Uh, we'll go to now to we will fly to Africa, South Africa. And a question from Sydney, Sibuzizo Mavundla. I hope it's right. Can you hear me, Sydney? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Please, your question. <laughs> All right. What's, what's going wow. on, man? Thank you. Man. Hey, how are you, man? Good, man. Good to see you. <laughs> Good to see you, too, man. Very good to see you. I'm very happy to be on this platform. It's my first time to be here, man. It's, uh, it's a very beautiful platform talking to you guys. I mean, uh, Winton, I've been following you since, I don't know when, man, starting school, uh, varsity that I'm talking about, college, following you. My mentor was telling me about you. Come listen to this uh, new trumpet player and all that. You know, that's a, it's a very beautiful uh, thing to hear. And, uh, uh, and earlier on, we spoke about, you spoke about, uh, uh, the interactions, like in terms of today, people they listen to the new ways, the new ways of listening, like uh, the iTunes and all of it. And you guys grew up in the inner way. You could just go to a club and see uh, Freddie Hubbard. You could see Miles Davis. So the whole kind was talking about that. Yeah, that's right. So basically, what I'm saying, it was so beautiful to have you with us last year in South Africa in Johannesburg seeing you live with your band you were very inspired and uh, it brings the question now in terms of to get an institution like that going like a big band uh, that is like full-time playing music dedicated to making music preserving the tradition uh, how how easy it is and how easily can it be achieved if if it's easy and i don't think it's easy so what is the best way if there is the best way to deal with a band on a daily basis or monthly basis? Well, it's hard to yes. get, it's hard to get a institution in a band. It, it, you gotta look at it like you, you wanna get a community of people around an issue. And that issue is the importance right. of the meaning of a music. It's what we're all talking about today. Mm -hmm. Hokan was talking about going out yes. and hearing people. He, and he talked about the ancestors and you could touch them. But we still touch each other. Okay, we, we are one, we, we, and, and Allison spoke, I know her, we've we seen each other, we talk all the time. I've seen you, we talk with each other. You know, when I saw you on the screen, it made me smile because I thought about the kind of warmth and the vibration we had when we actually met in South Africa. And uh, you have to get your community excited about the music you want them to play. And the community is not just musicians. It's people in the, in the business, mm -hmm. people in, there are a lot of people around who want something of meaning, something to do sell them on that vision. Just like if you were trying to get, uh, if you're trying to get your, your, your church or your school is going somewhere else around the world on a trip. Let's say you want, you want them to go to France. You start raising money, you're talking to people, you're asking them, you're selling them. Then the most important thing for musicians is have music that's difficult for them to be challenged by. Have gigs, mm -hmm. no matter if they don't pay anything, have a gig. And then keep your energy <laughs> moving forward. You know what I'm saying? And then it's going to be okay. I get you. So, so thank you so much for calling in, man. It's, it's good to see you. I see you got your glasses up on your head. Don't fight with it. <laughs> Don't fight for looking at these little icons. <laughs> good luck reading the music. That's the challenge in this yeah. time. Can we look at a piece of music and see what's on it? Hey, that's going to <laughs> Take care. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you yeah, very right. much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Greetings from Jonathan. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Hey, much love to y'all. Yeah. Thank, thank you, man. Thank you, Sydney, <laughs> for, for joining us. You, yeah, do, right. you, 
Do you want to add something, uh, uh, Reinhold and Hokan? It's fine. Let's go to the next question then. Uh, let's fly to Australia now. Uh, Melanie Wilkinson. Melanie, can you hear me? Hello. Please, hey. a question. Can you hear me? Hi, Erica. Hi, Ryan. Hey, nice to see you. Hello, Melanie. <laughs> I'm in big sorry, everybody. Healthy and th thirsty. <laughs> 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 it's five, nearly five thirty here. Yeah. Oof. yeah. Wow. Bravo. We'll say hello, Winton. Oh my gosh, hey. and Hawk. <laughs> I can't believe I got to ask a question. Now I don't know what to ask. It doesn't I matter. Do know what I <laughs> <laughs> um. So what I wanted to ask you guys, um. Um, I'm in the process of preparing for a recital for my master's degree and um, it's a 50 minute recital. I was just wondering if you've got any tips for anybody like me or any other students, um, how you'd go about uh, constructing a daily routine in preparation like, you know, the last three to four weeks leading up to a recital. Uh, Reinhold? You start? Oh, I, I struck it because I'm, I, I think it's a very bad idea to, uh, of some people who to give a trumpet player a recital for 50 minutes playing through, which is effect, effectively um, nearly impossible. What I do in my school is I, I, try, I always bring two people who do an examiner together that you get a rest that you play two pieces and then you have another one playing two pieces but i don't i cannot i cannot uh, infect your school system with this idea but i do also in international competitions where i'm in the jury i always recommend for example in morris and ray the competition i asked him could not play all people uh, play their first piece telemann concerto and then the second piece to make it more possible not to fail in the second piece so much but uh, of course um, such a program must be done intelligent to be able to play and you you have to know your capacities and then uh, take take a lot of time to prepare it to uh, with with a lot of uh, slow down activities to to not to be too busy to play one piece after the other and you struggle take place things slowly and do a lot of breathing exercises wim hof can help you Frank, perhaps <laughs> wim hof, yes. you know wim hof yeah you know him go in the ice water yeah very cold <laughs> makes you more healthy and ask your yeah. acupuncture man to find the point where, where the lips are uh, uh, restored the most easiest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will. I'll do that, Reinhold. Okan, would you like to say something? Well, I just find, I find that every process preparing is, is very, very long. And, but it, it mm. also, Contrary to Rhino's sausages, they, it, it doesn't really have an end. You know, you have to realize that whatever result you are with that day is a step. You know, and, and, and maybe to be very far ahead and prepare and then let it rest for a while, take it up again, and, and, and you can work on stamina in the way that you, I mean, stamina is, is is here and, and there, and you can you can you can try to push gently your your limit, but gently, and it takes it takes longer time than we think. And also, once you get to to another level, all you realize is that it can be even better. So there there is this 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 side of accepting, you know, acceptance also is, is I think is very very important. That you know this is where I am at now. 
and, and here we are. And then maybe in three weeks, it's, it's something else. And then in three years, it's, it's yet something else. You know, it's, it's a little bit dangerous to say that it's only on that day that I have to peak. You know? But we, we leave that to the sports people. <laughs> Thank you. Winton, anything? I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with, with, with uh, yes. both my colleagues actually said the similar, similar type, okay. type of thing from, from different angles. Ocon okay. seemed like he was saying, you know, this is what you got to do. The only thing I suggest to you is play through your recital every day at the end of the day. And don't stop, no matter how Because the first time I played a recital, I, pr I practiced every piece, and I was always stopping to correct things. And the first time I played it all the way through was the night of that recital. That was a, a huge mistake. So mm. just go through it all, and it'll give you a sense of what you have to do. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Melanie. Um, let's go to Thank Scotland. You. Brian, get some sleep. Mike, <laughs> five thirty. Yes. Get you some rest. Yes. <laughs> oh, Lord, I'm, I'm up all night now. Oh, have a good day. <laughs> now let's go to Scotland. Brian McGinley, can you hear us? Yeah, Brian? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Hey. Yes. Good. Hello, Brian. Nice to see you. Hi. Nice to see you, Hi. Uh, nice to see you all. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you for Olivier uh, for setting this up and hello to the, the three of you. Um, it's fantastic to see you looking so well. Um, I have a very simple question. Um, in this time when there are not so many live performances going on, uh, we can all reflect back on um, the past. And just instantly, I'd like to know what's the first most memorable performance it doesn't have to be the the you know the ultimate best one but the first most memorable performance that pops into your head simply that thank you uh winton maybe sorry <laughs> well just because because my father passed away and i'm not i'm not saying it to be any way about it i remember i was put when in the 70s we learned how to circular breathe so i would circular breathe on every solo just play without stopping and people just start cheering so i did it two or three solos i was getting all, all, all the applause my father motioned me over to the piano and when i came over leaned over he said hey man the circus is down the street play some music <laughs> so I, I remember that <laughs> <laughs> Well, I had another one in mind, but now that Winton tells that one, I, this goes back to, to when, when I met you, Reinhold, the first time, and it was in the Munich, Munich competition, and I was playing the last movement of the Hindemith Sonata, <laughs> and I got very emotional. You know the, the 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 meaning of this music, and I, you know, and I, I almost kind of lost it in, in the emotion of the music. And Thibaut came up to me and he took me like this and he said, they should cry, not you. Wow, <laughs> wow, 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 <laughs> wow. <laughs> and then I was, I was thinking of one when, when you first asked Brian, which was, very, which was actually then just after that competition and I was invited to play the first time in, in Berlin in the Philharmonic Hall, and the Rias stellt for this, these concerts, uh, and, and um, the Haydn, of course, and, and just the feeling of, of what a hall does, you know, a, 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 an orchestra and the acoustic of a hall. And I remember that that concert was so decisive for me that, you know, I. I this is what I want to do my whole life. I, mean, I remember deciding it there and then. That this, this is it. This is really what I want to do. So sorry, two answers. <laughs> have three. Reinhold? It's so hard. I mean, uh, in, the, in the moment, my little fall, fall, the, the they spoke about their concerts. I, I had uh, a lot of different things in my mind, but one rested. I was uh, 70 years old, played Telemann Concerto in Cairo uh, with the German president and, uh, and uh, what was in this time the, uh, the Egyptian president, one meter in front of me. And just uh, 30 seconds before I had to go on stage, I got bleeding of the nose. 
So you have the first movement of the Telemann and you have Bambi, da, di, da, Bambi, and I was always <laughs> trying, <laughs> taking up the blood again in this little rest. And I, it was a very intense freezing, and that helped me a lot to come to the first movement. <laughs> 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 it happened. It didn't happen again, unfortunately. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for, Brian, for your question. Uh, Great to see you, Brian. Really nice uh, to see you. Yeah. yeah. Scott, Brian, time, Scott. time is running, and I we will go to the last two questions soon. But before that, I would like to apologize if. We could not take pick up all the questions because it's I mean you are more than 200 to register and more than 100 questions my wish was to also have one question from each continent but unfortunately here at home uh, even if I'm helped with uh, three uh, great person uh, we don't uh, it's very hard to read the Japanese names on the list of participants so I apologize it's very hard to find uh, who is who uh, I don't read Japanese, uh, for example, and uh, we know there are also people from South America, Central America. So uh, I just want to say uh, I'm sorry if we if it's not possible to have everyone. So uh, now we will go to uh, two more questions. Uh, we go back to USA, and we have Matt and Yena Vangiel. Can you hear us? Uh, yes. Yes, yes. Hello. Hello, hello. Hi, we're both trumpet players. Uh, and, you know, uh, <laughs> we're just, you three have been huge inspirations for us our whole lives. Um, and, and we're so grateful that we get to be here. And thank you for taking the time to do this. Um, uh, one of uh, our, our questions is uh, basically, do you have, uh, I know the last one was about performances. Do you have uh, performances outside of the concert hall or some musical experience that you had that was not in a traditional setting that was very uh, meaningful to you? <laughs> um, Reinhold, you can start. Yeah, One, I was, once I was in Mongolia in the end of the ballet where the world looked like there is the end of the world. And there was a Buddhistic temple and the Buddhistic tablet, one monk, monk. And I pl played with a huge group of people from the United States, uh, modern music, ethnic music, uh, totally mix. And I was walking up the hill uh, for one hour and I was uh, several hundred meters higher than this uh, temple. And then I thought, okay, now I start, nobody will hear me. But when I later came down, they said it was terrible. It was so loud because of the <laughs> acoustics. Uh, and I played. I think I played uh, uh, some some uh, Chacinto Chelsea solo piece, uh, the the John Cage of Italy. Um, it was amazing because the acoustic uh, for me it was normal playing, and down in the valley it was extremely loud. So that was my outside uh, crazy experience. Who's next? Who's next? Uh, Winton. Sorry. You know, um, and I played in so many crazy places. I guess I was playing a parade <laughs> in New Orleans, and uh, this guy I was playing with a trumpet player named Cyril. And all through the parade, because your chops get tired, so you try to figure out how can I stop playing. He would say, "They don't do this in New York. They don't do this in California." They don't do this in Pennsylvania. He was saying all the places they don't do this, this type of parade. And then this was in the, in the 70s. That every time you have a parade, it would be some type of shooting would take place. And people just run all over the place. So Surreal so was a little overweight. So all of a sudden, some shooting stuff, pop, 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 pop. So of course, he and I started just taking out, running down the street. So as we were running down the street, he looked at me. He was trying to keep all his clothes and his horn together. And he said, they don't do this in Los Angeles. <laughs> so you know, just, <laughs> I have like crazy instances of stuff like that. <laughs> oh, come. Well, I came to think about uh, when I actually didn't play a note, but it had to do with the 
what I see here tonight because I, I look at Winton's lip and it looks kind of like mine, you know, a bit long. <laughs> right. We were on uh, on travels in India, and there was this this incredible temple in Jaipur. And at the guard tower uh, up there was a musician playing some really weird brass instruments. And we, I explained to the guy that I was a musician, and we were allowed to go up, and and this was all very ceremonial. And of course. This man and I, we had no other common point of reference. He didn't speak any language that I spoke. I could have, uh, you know, I could have named some footballer or even, I don't know, something from my world, but he wouldn't have. We, there was absolutely no point of common reference. But he looked at my lip and pointed. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he he handed me this really weird looking probably about 600 year old thing that he would play every every hour and and i i, I looked at it and he, uh, i said uh, no thank you <laughs> <laughs> you should have played it man <laughs> <laughs> I, I i think you would have cut my lip completely <laughs> Thank you, Madam Yena, well, great to see you both. We go to the last question and we go now to someone who knows how to ask questions. Okay. Uh, Sarah, can you hear us? Hi! I can oh, hear oh, Hi. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi, hi, I'm, hi. I'm an imposter. I'm a gate crasher. I hope <laughs> horn players are allowed. We all play horn, right, Winston? We all play the horn. <laughs> Who let these horn players in here? <laughs> yeah. It's great. Olivier, thank you so much. This is just so incredible, even for a, a non a non trumpet player. And it's lovely to see Ali and, and Sergey and Matthias and, and all of you. Um and I just I wanted to say how much I admire and adore you three, really. You're such great friends and you're you do amazing things for the music world. But I'm honored that I'm allowed to ask a question as well. Um, <laughs> Uh, my horn was blessed by Winton, um, having, having done the horn challenge, but unfortunately Hawken and Reinhold, they were two chickens, so they made me do my own horn challenge. Hawken? <laughs> <laughs> it's for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you, been, have, you been practicing, that, have you been practicing, Sarah? No, not at all. Uh, I'm lucky <laughs> if I practice the horn these days. <laughs> but my question for you three, um, before I get online and donate, which I hope everybody has done, right? Everybody's watching this is done, right, Olivier? Because that's yes. what we're... Thank you, sorry. Yeah, thank you for your support. Nice you... My you question, I can see Reinhold getting really nervous down there, um, is if you didn't play the trumpet, which instrument would you play? <laughs> like so are we supposed to say the horn, all of us? No, you, you, didn't, you didn't even play mine. Only Winton dared to. <laughs> so, who wants to start? Rhino. I was always very jealous when I listened to my son playing the cello. And I thought, wow, it's such a nice instrument. And then now my son, the other son, uh, is the trombone player. And I thought, oh, it's. Uh, more the male voice it's the it's not the female voice it's the male voice uh, the trombone and I sometimes I get really jealous about when I hear him playing um, I love this instrument but and then I would come back on earth again and I would start to think about how can you play second Brandenburg <laughs> and I would I would do the same shit again <laughs> and Hokan well um, it's like it's like this, you know. There's this party trick yeah. where you, you have to name your your favorite animal, and then you have to say your second favorite animal. And when you when when you the, the one you name as your favorite is is what you want to be seen as, and and then the second one is is what you really are. And I remember when I, I was answering those questions, I said for the first, my favorite animal is a tiger. You know, and then my second name, uh, my second, my second uh, animal uh, was a dog. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, but then I think it's the same with this. You know, I would say uh, the first animal 
is probably the violin with all its endless possibilities of colors and and phrasing possibilities and so that would be my tiger but then i also remember when i was when i was eight and i was given a, a trumpet i had kind of the same questions what would you have liked if it wasn't a trumpet and then i said a banjo <laughs> <laughs> So that's yeah. my dog. <laughs> I love that. And you, Winton? I would just uh, piano and drums. Piano and drums. Oh, piano, yeah. drums, kind of. Just, I look at them the same in a way. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. Thank you, Sarah. Well, it's amazing to see you. Uh, a pleasure, a pleasure to be in Alpha Gate Crash. And bravo for this this fantastic talk. It's lovely to see you guys. Great surprise. Great to Thank see you, you, Sarah. Thank you very much. I'm Great. going back on mute. <laughs> <laughs> So my dear, it was uh, really a pleasure to, to have you all together. It was uh, more than a, a dream. Uh, if you allow myself to ask a question, because I, I got this question a lot. Um, we had the, the three tenors before, and now we have the big three. Would you consider <laughs> one day to record something together? <laughs> yeah. No problem. Yes? OK. Of course. I'm, I'm going to hold you all to it. Don't say yes if we're not going to get a phone call. <laughs> you, you organize it, Olivier. You just go and organize. Okay. <laughs> thank exactly. you. Thank you. Well, I want to thank you very, very much, d d deeply. Uh, all, all you, all three, you have accepted to do that so, so quickly, and no question. It was like, yeah, well, let, let's do it, and it was so easy to find a date. Just one date was. <laughs> But, uh, so it's, um, it was am amazing to organize that. I want to thank you also all the people behind you, Edith, Luigi, Suzanne, and Erico. Thank you for helping the, the contacts. And of course, thank you for all participants on Zoom, all the followers on Facebook Live. Thank you for your donation already done and for the coming soon. And I want to thank you also my team here at home. Uh, I had Judith, um, Milena, and my wife, Anouk. So I'm, I'm grateful she could help me because otherwise alone it would be a, a nightmare. I think the live went on. We were also um, all on Zoom with recording. So I hope that everything is safe for our YouTube archives. And right now, I think you are ready for the toast, right? I have here five glasses. I have three for everybody of you. I have a glass. So, <laughs> cheers. Thank you. Have some yeah, champagne. Thank you. And I wish you, you, of course, all the best. Take care and hope right. to see you soon. Much love to all my colleagues. Thank you all so much. Y'all lift, lifted me up. It's a great day. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Olivier. Yeah, it was Thank phenomenal. You. Really, really wonderful. And, and, you know, slightly sad that I can't see you for real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We do it next time. Yeah. Next time. Okay. For the no, recording. No. For the recording. <laughs> okay. Bye -bye. Have to, thank you so much. Bye bye. All the best. Bye bye. Thank bye -bye. you all. <laughs>